Hi guys and welcome to another ESP32 technical tutorial. In this edition we're going to look into what it takes to debug some of your applications. So if you're like me, you write an application, you deploy it to an ESP32 and bang it crashes something's gone wrong and you look at the diagnostics and you go well I wonder what it was because what you get are program counters and other low-level components of the microprocessors running on the ESP32 device so this is a, a real example for me I had this program in front of us here and what this program was supposed to do is uh, run and connect or load into the ESP32 code that would cause it to be an access point so that I could have stations running on it. Unfortunately, when I compiled it and I compile it like this and I do a nice compile and everything's good and then I flash it to the ESP32 and that was good, no issues there. And then I went over to my uh, terminal environment and I opened up a a uh, uh, minicom terminal and I rebooted my terminal I rebooted my ESP32 rather and bang we got an exception it crashed almost immediately and I'm looking at this uh, exception dump and I'm going well what am I going to do now there's not much to tell from looking at this what might have been going on so I'm gonna to have to debug this so that then took me into the realm of how does one debug I read on the forum and there's a great story so let's go through the story the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to prepare your environment for debugging. Now we do that by running make menu config. That's we should be familiar with that from the uh, ESP IDF commands. And then if we go down into the component config and then into free RTOS, free real time operating system, there's an entry in here on what we want to happen when a panic handler is invoked within the device. Now a panic handler is the last thing that the ESP32 can do when it detects a program. It basically panics and in the panic handler the default is print registers and reboot. This is the, de this is the default. However what we can do is we can come in here and we can change that to invoke a GDB stub. Now GDB is the GNU debugger. So uh, this basically causes code to run in the ESP32 that would allow us to connect a GDB debugger from our PC into the ESP32. So we change this setting to be uh, invoke uh, the GDB stub on a panic handler. We save all our work and then we rebuild all of the environment. I've already done that in my environment. And then when the exception occurs, we disconnect our terminal. And on my system, that would be uh, control A, Z, Q. I'm running minicom here. So that would disconnect our terminal. And uh, if that has worked... Uh, let's see, kill minus. I'm still trying to disconnect my terminal. Not sure I've got that right yet, so let me deconnect it, disconnect it from uh, my Windows device and reconnect it again. Now I'm sure it's disconnected. Now we run the GDB command. Now this is the full command prompt. Extensa ESP32 ELF GDB, the name of your ELF, fi ELF file. We want to connect at 11.5.200 baud and uh, the, accept, uh, the extra command is tar target remote dev TTY USB. And when we run that, we immediately come into a GDB environment. Now here, I can list my code and I can see where my exception occurred. So my exception occurred at line 198 of this common error handler code. Now that doesn't tell me much, but if I run BT for backtrace, oh, I thought we'd get more than that. Let's uh, try it again. Got something wrong there. Sorry, guys. Um, let's uh, run it again. And... Well, that's not very good. So let me pause the video and figure out what I have to do to fix this. 
sorry about that. What I did was I re dis I disconnected and then reconnected my USB device. But now when we run the BT for backtrace command, what we get is the backtrace from where the exception was handled. So the exception occurred here and then we rewound and rewound and rewound. And what you're looking for is code which is running in your own application. So I'm running main.c and line 36 of main.c. And now I have the last C source file and the line number in that source file for code that I'm responsible for. So if we go back to my code and it was line number 36 and I'm looking at line number 36 and there. What I see is I'm setting the configuration for my ESP32 device as a station, not as an access point. So the fix for this was to change this from STA for station to BAP for access point. And I was able to figure that out by looking at the stack trace, figuring out where in my code main.c line 36, main.c line 36, and we threw an exception in here, and this now tells me where within the code I should spend my time looking for problems. And of course, this is only a small program. This is a trivial program. If this was a many thousand line program spread over many source files, then uh, trying to figure that out from just uh, a stack trace is going to be nearby impossible. So using GDB with the GDP attachable stub like this made it trivial. And that, my friends, is what I wanted to share with you. So I hope you found some value there. Um, obviously, go to the internet and study up on GDB. Uh, that is a science and study all of in itself. But fortunately, there's great materials on using GDB. And uh, now you've seen how to attach it. So thanks, guys, and talk to you all again soon. Bye for now.